Okay, welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to do another Neocasa video and in this video we're going to replace the infrared sensors. So about a week ago I noticed that it had an error on, it was the empty light flashing. Um, there was plenty of litter in it, the bin wasn't full either, but the trap door was kind of stuck open. Now I did try manually closing it and it still didn't work and it was just throwing out error all the time so it wouldn't do any emptying cycles. Now I looked online and on some of the Facebook groups and it said to initially make sure your infrared sensors were clean. So I did that and that didn't make any difference either. So I reached out to Neocasa uh, who have just sent me out some new infrared sensors. They do have a video that goes with it. Um, so we're gonna kind of work through that together. I'm gonna show you a bit more close up what to do to replace these sensors. Um, on one hand, I really like that they're sending out parts for people to change. On the other hand, it looks a bit fiddly, so we'll see how we get on with this. Um, but I thought it'd be helpful for you guys to take you along on the journey. I have literally just had the M1 for a year today. Um, so obviously a couple of things have gone wrong with it and I will do a fully updated kind of year with the Neocasa M1 uh, in a few weeks time. So make sure you subscribe if you wanna see that. But in the meantime, let's get on and replace the infrared sensors. Okay, for step one, obviously you want to make sure it's unplugged. I've removed the top as well. I've taken this as a chance to give it a clean. I'm going to flip it up. And you can see these are the sensors here. Obviously, that's just the edges of them. So what we're going to need to do is get this bottom off. Um, and there's four screws to do that. We've got one here, one here, one here, one here. Um, now, they're quite small cross-headed screwdriver uh, screws. So we're just gonna remove them like that. And they do have a washer attached to them. So make sure you got somewhere to keep them safe to one side as well. Um, I also really recommend when you come to put them back in, using a pair of pliers because they are quite fiddly to get back in. So that's one removed and I'm just gonna do breast now. Okay, so once those are removed, this bit literally just lifts off like that, nice and easy. And you just put that to one side. There's no wires or anything on this. So we can just move that to the side and come back to that later. Uh, and you can see you've got the trap door here. You've got the sensors here. So we're gonna start the process by removing the sensors and they are just stuck on. So Neocasa say to use a flat headed screwdriver to kind of pry them off because they are just stuck on with tape. But obviously be careful because there are some wires here as well. So the wires are just here either side of it going into the machine. So we're obviously not gonna pull them fully out and you can actually see the wire continues up there and into there. So we are gonna need to remove more of this shortly, but we're gonna to first pry these off. Okay, so at this point you can also see the tape. So we're gonna try and get this off as well. I don't know how well this is gonna come off, so I'm just gonna be quite gentle with it and see. Okay, now we've got nine fixing screws to remove to get this uh, base off. So we're gonna to need to remove, I think that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. That's five, six, seven, uh, and I don't know whether that's two, oh, eight, nine. So all of those screws need to come out. Now they do go quite deep, so we're gonna need a longish screwdriver. I'll see if this one's enough and we'll see. Okay, so I needed a longer screwdriver, so I use this one. Um, it's only really the sides and the bottom you need the long ones for, the top ones don't go quite as deep. Um, the screws don't come out with it unless you've got a magnetic screwdriver, which I haven't. So I'm gonna remove this very carefully because it's gonna be wires still attached and obviously the screws are gonna fly everywhere, so I need to make sure I catch them. So let's give that a go. Okay, so you can see, obviously it's still attached there. We've got the cables that go up here. Um, so we've got a few different things. We've got a chipboard under here, which is obviously for the trapdoor motor, I think. Um, and then we've obviously got, oh sorry, trapdoor motor is there. Um, well, this is pretty clean inside actually, considering it's been used for a year. So we are just gonna need to remove the right things for these sensors. So I'm just gonna look at the video again. Okay, so near cast say you should be able to gently remove this and place it on the back. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to do, so let's give it a go and see. Right. 
they dropped, a couple of screws have fallen out, that's all fine. So you also want to be careful because you don't want to damage any of these cables. Uh, the cables we're interested in are the ones for the infrared sensors, which are this one here that comes up to here, uh, and this one here, which is the other one. You can see that just by wiggling the infrared sensor. So we're going to need to very carefully remove some of the surface glue. So near Casa say it's this one, I think. Looking at the colour cables, I'm saying it's this one. So it's, yeah, this multicolour one here and this one here. They're just kind of gently pulling it. So I don't want to damage anything. So we're going to see if we can do this. There we go. So that's come off. Obviously, just be careful where you've got the other cables. So this is our other one. So I should be able to get you in nice and close with this 360 camera. There we go. So that's just pulled out there. Nice and easy. Bit of glue on the outside. That's fine. Okay, and then we can remove these bits of tape to get this cable out. So we're not going to take the tape completely off because we are going to want to reuse it, or you might want to get some electrical tape and put it on yourself. So we're asking to be gentle with this and try and get this out of here. Now, normally stuff like this, I'd take photos, uh, but because I've got the near casa video, I think I'm all right. So I'm just going to take this tape off of there, that wrapped around under there. And of course, I'm also videoing this so I can go back if I need to. And then we're just going to take that bit of tape from there and just plonk that there for now. And then that should just go all the way through there. And that gives us a infrared sensor that's no longer connected. That was, uh, well, I suppose it's technically the right one, but it's the left one to me at the moment. And I'm going to do the same over here. So we're going to move this bit of tape up here. And again, just be careful where you've got other cables because obviously you don't want to damage them. There's actually quite a lot of loose cables with this uh, red stuff, which is fine. Okay, so again, we can just poke that all the way through there. And that is the second sensor removed. Okay, so the next step for Neocasa is to replace it with the new components. So I've got my two new components here. They um, look basically the same as the old ones. There is an obvious way they go um, because of the way the cables go. So that's going to be the left-hand one. That's the one that came off here anyway, I think. Oh, is that the right-hand one? Let me have a look. So I think, let's have a look. So we've got this one here, which came off of this side over here. And that looks like that. So it's not that one. So this one, so we're going to basically line up where the cables go. I don't know if you can see that very well. Okay, so this is the old one here. Uh, we can tell it's the old one because it's got the glue on the top of here. And we can see this bit juts out here and the cable comes out here. This is the new one. I think it's going to go on this side. And again, you can see cable comes out here and this juts out. So this is one that's going to go there. Interestingly, the new one seemed to have some extra protection along that side there. Maybe that's kind of why some of the old ones failed. Maybe some liquid got in there or something. I'm not sure. Um, but um, I'm also going to get the vacuum and just, there's only little bits of dust on here, so I'm going to get a duster and just give this a quick dust. It shouldn't make any difference at all. It's really clean inside, but might as well when I've got it open. So let's do that quickly. Okay, so that's everything nice and clean before we put it all back together. So we're going to take the new one of these first for this side, and we're going to go around the other side, poke the cable through there and trace back upwards. These do have some protective film on, which we'll remove eventually as well. So let's do that. Okay, so we know that this went, uh, I'm actually going to start by plugging this in and then tidy up the cables. I'm going to kind of poke the cable up through where it went. So we know the cable went up through there, it tucked in there, the tape did its thing. So, and they're going to go into there. So let's do that. Okay, now I'm not sure how well you can see this, but we have some slim holes and you can see which way it needs to go. So I'm just going to push that in like that and it should just push in fairly gently, but obviously you're going to want to make sure you feel like it's in. So that's in 
Uh, just check none of the glue is around the outside, kind of blocking where it needs to go, but that's all good. Okay, so I kind of figure any excess cable wants to be kind of dangling out here because we can poke that back in up here if we need to, but I've just put those bits of tape back in. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So again, we know this is this one because of where the cable comes out and where it goes round. And again, this one's got the extra glue as well. So we're going to do the same on this side. Obviously, we want to make sure it's tucked there because we don't want to trap any of this when we come to close this. And always be careful as well that you're not putting too much pressure on these. Uh, so that's back through there. So we can put this bit of cable. Uh, we can tuck this back under here, which I think just held that in place a little bit. And we can just do that as well. So I think we're good. So the next stage is going to be to flip it and get it all screwed back together again. Okay, so before I stick these sensors back on, one thing I will show you is that there's basically a tiny bit of dust in here, but next to nothing. So all of this in here is pretty clean. So I don't think there's any issues with this. Um, and in particular, I can see that the trap door is here and everything is kind of pretty clean around here. So we don't need to worry about any of that. Um, so you can see the trap door motors and things are just around here. Um, so let's get this all back together again. So before we screw it all back together, what we need to do is we need to put the stickers on. So the stickers obviously go where the holes are. So we're going to stick them on there first, obviously not trapping the cable like that. And same on the other side, and then we stick the sensor on. So let's do that. So I'm going to stick both sides on first, just because I think that's going to be easier. So what we need to do now is get these stuck back on, obviously the holes have to line up, uh, which is actually the way you can tell which side goes where, because you've got round holes on this side, and this one has uh, kind of, I don't know, pill-shaped holes. So you've got to make sure the holes line up and stick that on there, and obviously don't trap any of the cables, so you might want to poke some more of that cable up through there, and we can tidy that up in a second. So let's do that. Okay, once that's all lined up, we can just push gently on there. It's 3M tape, so it should stick nice and easily. So you can see now we've got cable that goes, oh, I've trapped my cable slightly. Okay, so you can see the cable goes up over the top there, up over the top there. This is all stuck on where it should be. We've got these final tapes, which I will remove um, in a second, and then we're going to put this back together, just making sure we don't trap any of the cables. So we want to make sure this cable is kind of tucked up there as we lift this up into place, which I'm going to do with both hands. Okay, so now it's time to put all of our screws back in place. Now when I do screws, I like to kind of go opposites. So I'm going to do Okay, so we've got it all screwed back together. I've took off the plastic bits off of the side of here now. So I think we're pretty much good to go. Okay, so it's switched back on. I haven't put the top back on yet. Just want to see what happens. We haven't got the empty light on, so that's promising. Let's go and get the drum and see. There we go, this is looking promising. Let's see what it does. Most action I've had from it about a week, so that's good as a starter. Okay, so that does seem to have fixed my issue, so I'm going to hit clean and we're just going to watch it do a cycle, but I'm pretty sure we're all good. Okay, so the trap door has opened, which is what we want, and we lost all the crap, which is good. So there we go, that is how to replace the infrared sensors on the Neocasa M1, which is probably what's going on if your trapdoor gets stuck and it's just flashing on the full light, even though it's not full. If you've tried cleaning the sensors and it doesn't make any difference, you are gonna need a new part, which you get from Neocasa. I emailed them about it about a week ago, 
They had the part dispatched by Thursday last week. It's currently Wednesday and it came from Germany. Uh, I live in the UK. So not too bad at all. Um, quite impressed about customer services. In the meantime, if I just share what I did as well. So what I've been doing for the last few days is basically whenever the cats have uh, used it a couple of times a day, I have basically just manually rotated the drum myself and emptied it into the bottom. So I haven't had to use a different litter tray. I've just had it switched off and I've been the motor effectively. But I hope this video helps you guys out. If you've got any questions about it, do stick and blow and I'll try and help you out. I'm a, a genuine owner, I purchased this myself. Um, I've got no near, like affiliation to near Casa. I just want to try and help you guys out if I can. I am going to do an updated review on it. Uh, so make sure you subscribe if you want to see that and I'll see you guys again soon.